Hey, I'm David Levin, and welcome to Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes stories of your favorite TV shows that you wouldn't have known unless you were there. Now, my guest today may best be known for his role that was immortalized in the catchphrase, What You Talking About, Willis? Back in the 80s, Todd Bridges, no relation to Lloyd, Bo, or Jeff, played the part of Willis on the popular TV series Different Strokes, opposite the diminutive Gary Coleman. As a child star and later, Todd ran into some personal issues, but that was not the focus of our conversation, especially since he has since gotten his life together. In this first of six parts, Todd walks us through his life and career. Today, Todd talks about Fish, the TV show starring Abe Vigoda, his first big break on a TV series, how he worked on the same studio lot as Soap and Welcome Back, Cotter. Todd also reveals how the writers of different strokes were ripping off Brady Bunch stories. He talks about the atmosphere on the set of Different Strokes and what was it like being a kid at that studio in the age of lots of kids being on shows at that studio. Shows like Different Strokes, Facts of Life, and Give Me a Break. Here's Todd Bridges. Fish, Fish was starring A Fagoda, and the show was actually originally created for A Fagoda and me. Um, I did a Barney Miller show, and uh, the exec producer, Danny Arnold, who created the show, he said he was going to find a TV show for me, and then they called me in later on and said, I got a show for you with me, um, starring me and Aoife Goda, and it was going to be called Fish, about an um, a ex-retired police officer who runs an orphanage. And um, I was, uh, the funny thing on that show was I was the only kid from Los Angeles. Everyone else was from New York. So it was kind of strange and weird because I was the only California person there, and we shot in California. Everyone always thought I was from New York. That's the first thing. Like, You're from New York? I'm like, no, I'm from L.A. Because everyone else was from there. Um, well, we, we, I, see, I guess on that show, I would always say the, the funniest thing for me was eating with um When I would go to eat at um, the Cassisi's house, it would be, you know, I wasn't used to real Italian cooking. And, and they sit down, and you get you a full seven-course meal. And that was like, you know, I'm sitting there going, oh my God, that's a lot of food, you know? And, and if you don't eat, they're like, you know, feel bad. So, you know, it was always, you know, things going on on the set and everyone spoke Italian, you know, but me and my mom. And um, we always had a good time on that show, though. It was, it was a bunch of kids always just, you know, running around. And we um, actually um, were on the same lot as um, uh, uh, Soap, a TV show called Soap. Um, um, Welcome back, Carter. Um, I, knew, I knew all those guys very well. The Gong Show was there. I knew um, the guy who did that. Chuck Barris. Chuck Barris very well. He was a strange guy. but what was he's, he like? He was a nice guy. He's always wore a hat, took me around everywhere. You know, always took me inside and showed me. And I'd watch, you know, some of the people come in there that would try for the Gong Show. I'd sit down behind the table with him and a bunch of people, and we'd just watch him. And, then, you know, and the, the soap thing was funny because, remember the puppet, the, the little doll thing? That was always in the box. You could never really see it. How old were you at the time? Um, eight. And it was always in the box, and we just, you know, I would ha hung out with, um, I knew John Travolta very well, um, Lawrence Shelton Jacobs very well, um, all those guys that were on, on, on Welcome Back, Carter. I know them all very well. And um, everyone on Soap, and Soap was one, actually was, not only did I know the cast, it was one of my favorite shows. And, it was um, a great show. It was a great was show. Like As a kid, to, to watch these TV shows and sort of be part of it, I mean, was, you know, most people just sort of see them on TV. Yeah, it was, it was, I guess it was so real, because it was like, to know the people and then to know that the people you meet are, is not the people you see because everyone thinks that, that they're going to meet, like people think they're going to meet Willis Jackson. They always think that. I'm like, you know, you're not meeting Willis Jackson. You know, or if you're in a bad mood, you know, someone says, oh, Willis wouldn't be mean. And I'm like, can Willis be in a bad mood? <laughs> but did your, did your real life ever sort of filter into Willis's life? No. No, I mean, in terms of like, did, in terms of like, did a writer take us something that happened to you, for example? No, our show, the funny part about our show was most of our plots were derived from um, this TV show. Uh, what was that show? Um, the Brady Bunch. If you ever watch The Brady Bunch, you'll see, because we had the same exact producers as The Brady Bunch, you'll see a bunch of plots that The Brady Bunch did, we did the same ones. Yep. Oh, yeah. Give you know, some examples. Uh, I got to think of the shows. Just most of the, a lot of the shows, most of the earlier shows were all derived from that. You know, you'd watch a show and you go, "Ah, oh, wait a minute!" You're reading, you go, you get a script, and you're like, "Man, you know, I guess they just re figured out they can get away with it for the first couple seasons, and they did." You know, and uh, you know, we saw a lot of that. Just a lot of you know, the goldfish dying. I think they did that in that show. 
The difference is they had to, you know, combine it, same plot, but just combine it with, uh, you know, the different strokes cast instead of the Brady Bunch cast. So, <laughs> <laughs> happened a lot. What was, what was, well, I'm interviewing Sherwood Schwartz today. Are you? Who created that? Wait till he finds that out. <laughs> um, what was the, what was the set like on, on that different strokes? We, in the first three years, were probably one of the best sets to be on. We um, had a lot of fun. We were kids, and we were, you know, growing up on the set. And we had, on our lot, we had every single kid's show that there was. Um, Norman Lear had, at the same time, he had Good Times. He had um, uh, Silver Spoons. He had uh, Facts of Life. He had Give Me a Break. He had Hello, Larry. He had all these TV shows, and all the kids were all on the same set, and I was the oldest boy, so I had a lot of fun. I was. Did you have to go to school with all the other kids. No, we went to school with only with only your castmates. You went to school with everyone else. Went to different different classes, but we're all in the same area. So at lunchtime, we all saw each other everywhere. We, um, you know, during the whole roller disco era, we all had roller skates, roller sk tennis shoes, roller skates. Somebody sold everyone on the set roller tennis shoes skates. So you see all these kids going, by each other, hey, hey. Zzz. You know, it was skating 100 miles an hour through the sets, you know, and they were like, hey, there's something, hey, man. You know, and, um, you know, all the Facts of Life girls. And I tell you, it was interesting because the first show they did the Facts of Life, I think had like 15 girls in it, I think, the first one before they narrowed it down to like six or whatever. But, um, and a lot of those girls, Jamie Gertz was one of them, um, you know, um, um, the girl from Pretty in Pink, um, what was her Molly name? Ringwall. Molly Ringwall was another one. Um, so it was a lot of girls that were, you know, became pretty famous from that after that show. But, uh, you know, me being the oldest boy, I was always looking at the girls like, hey, how you guys doing? You know, I was like, you know, until I started, you know, it was funny because no, no one was driving. And I think then we all slowly but surely started driving. And then that was, then there's a, you know, a bunch of cars coming to the set. That's all we have time for for now. Next time, Todd reveals how he and Gary Coleman played practical jokes on producers of different strokes. Plus, Todd talks about his feelings about family entertainment in general. Till then, what was your favorite episode of Different Strokes? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. I'm David Levin. Thanks for watching.